David, are you an atheist? Yes. When did you become an atheist? Uh, around age 12. Believing in God makes no sense. It, it's to, to me, it's the dumbest thing. It's 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 for people that can't accept the fact that they're going to die and rot in the ground like I'm going to do, and it, and it gives them some relief from from that thought because it's not the nicest thought in the world. Are you an atheist? Yes. Yes, I am. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Are you an atheist? I am. Yeah, I'm an atheist. Uh, yes, I am. Alex, do you believe in God's existence? No, I do not. How long have you been an atheist? I would say probably since I was about 15 years old. So you don't believe in the existence of God? No, not really. What happened when you were 15? Um, I started questioning things and I really just started to think about the logic behind everything. For the most part, we are not shown the evidence for there being a higher power. If we were, I almost guarantee that almost every atheist would immediately agree to there being a higher power. Are you atheists? Yes. Yes. Why? Um, well, I just haven't seen enough uh, evidence, I suppose. I grew up in a Christian family, and just over the few years d during high school and as I grew up, I just realized that there wasn't a lot of evidence to support that belief system. Are you open to evidence? Um, I, I think I am open to evidence. It just would have to be extraordinarily compelling, like out of this world compelling. If you could be given evidence, reasonable evidence, would, it, would you listen to it? Yeah, I would. You're someone who has no faith or no belief in a higher power or a creator, but if you were shown evidence, you would change your mind because you're open. Absolutely. Flick through the pages of the book I just put on your lap, look at the color pictures, and I'll ask you a question. Do you believe that book could happen by accident, that nothing produced the color pictures in the book that Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, ink fell from the sky and formed itself into those beautiful pictures. And then black ink fell from the sky, or from nowhere, and formed itself into coherent words and sentences, capitals and periods and commas, making sense, page numbers fell from the sky, all in order, and then it bound itself and formed itself into a cover with artwork, and there we have a book. Obviously, intelligent design designed the book. Wouldn't that be correct? Yeah. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. I mean, what is DNA? What is it? Deoxyribonucleic acid. And it's what makes up our bodies and our cells and everything that makes us who we are. DNA is like our biological code, kind of like binary zeros and ones. Information about us, who we are, what makes us us, parts of us, how we look, um, how we're built, everything like that. Your genes instructed your cells how to make your eyes and what color your eyes should be and your hair and your height and your personality. Scientists call it the instruction book for life. Basically. Everything that you are or ever will be made of starts as a tiny book of instructions found at each and every cell. Every time your body wants to make something, it goes back to the instruction book, looks it up, and puts it together. The book of you would have 46 chapters, one for each chromosome. Each of our book's 46 chapters is between 48 and 250 million letters long. That's 3.2 billion letters total. This is the secret language of DNA. This is the book of life. Instruction book for life. Yes. Instruction book for life. Yes. DNA is made up of genes, and genes give instructions to the cells as to how your body should grow. Did you know that those instructions, the instruction book of your DNA, just your DNA, was laid out end for end, we go to the sun and back a number of times. That book of instructions is so comprehensive. DNA is the genetic information encoded in the cell of every living thing that instructs our cells how to grow and how to function. It's our genes that determine whether our skin will be dark or light, have brown or blue eyes or red or green or yellow, have red hair, be brunette or blonde, be tall or not so tall, or the color of our feathers if we're a bird. Whether we're humans, fish, animals, insects, or plant life, the way our bodies look and operate has all been pre-written in the amazing book of our DNA. What do you think the mentality of someone who believes a book fell together without a bookmaker? Uh, well, it would be crazy. Do you think a book could make itself? No, I don't. Of course not. No. Utterly impossible. Yes. <laughs> if anything can happen by accident. I mean, from nothing. Um... Oh. Um couldn't happen, could it? I don't think so. It'd be impossible. It would be like saying uh, 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 an explosion 
caused uh, everything that makes a 747 airplane to all just come together by accident without some, without some intelligent thought behind it. That's, that's a good point. Do you believe DNA happened by accident? No, I think that it developed over the course of many, many millennia of evolution and development. DNA exists in every living, every living thing. Its origins don't matter. The fact that there is intelligent information tells us there must be an intelligent designer. Is this making you think? It is, and I, I do think about it from time to time. It's just, yeah, it's, it's complicated, definitely. Well, it's, DNA's complicated, but the point I'm trying to make is very simple. Book, book designer, book maker, DNA, intelligent designer. God. Does that make sense? Yes. You're an atheist? I am. What would you think of the mentality of someone who thought a physical book could make itself? I think they'd be silly. Of course it can't make itself. What would you think of the mentality of someone who believed the instruction book for life, DNA, made itself? Uh, well, I think it'd be silly as well. It would need investigation. That's atheism? Absolutely. And what would you think of the intelligence of someone who believed the instruction book for life made itself? Low, low intelligence level. DNA happened by accident? Um, Probably not too smart. <laughs> DNA couldn't make itself. It's impossible. Does that make sense? Yes. Is this making you think? Yes. <laughs> and what would you think of the person who believed that DNA, the instruction book for life, happened by accident? We're not just talking about human beings, we're talking about every form of life. Fleas, cats, dogs, elephants, cows, horses, trees, plants, everything has DNA. The instruction book for life. Which makes the book in your hand just seem feeble compared to the infinite intelligence that must have put the instruction book for life together. Can you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you believe DNA happened by accident? Uh, I believe it could. I Explain it to me, how a program could make itself out of nothing on how to make a human eye, giraffe's eyes, elephant's eyes, cats, dogs, puppies, flowers, birds, trees. Every living thing has DNA that's so complex, it's mind-boggling. It must have been a genius beyond any human reasoning that put it together. And to say it happened by chance is infinitely sillier than saying a physical book happened by chance. All I'm doing is reasoning with you. I'm not argue I don't want to win an argument. I'm just saying, I want you to concede something that's absolute common sense. You're an atheist, so you believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything. I mean, it can't be nothing. We all have to start from some point. I wouldn't say nothing created it. There had to be something there in the beginning. You like Richard Dawkins, don't you? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, I... Yeah, I like him. Do you believe nothing created everything, a scientific impossibility, which is what he believes? You don't believe in a creator of all things? If he says that, I think it's a very strange thing to say. Well, he says it. It's insane. Nothing can't create anything because it's nothing. There has to be something in the beginning. Nowhere in our history of, of human reality has something kind of just appeared out of nowhere. Do you believe that nothing created everything? Uh, no, because nothing can perform actions. That makes no sense. It's a default position. If you're saying nothing created everything, then you're agreeing with Richard Dawkins. You're mischaracterizing Richard Dawkins because Richard Dawkins, I'm sure he didn't say that. That seems ridiculous. Professor Richard Dawkins, arguably the world's most high-profile atheist, believes that in the beginning there was nothing and that nothing created everything. As he attempts to justify this belief, admitting that it defies common sense, the learned professor calls nothing something. Watch the reaction of his audience. Of course it's counterintuitive that you can get something from nothing. Of course common sense doesn't allow you to get something from nothing. That's why it's interesting. It's got to be interesting in order to give rise to the universe at all. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. It's exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever it is, it's very, very simple. And why is that funny? <laughs> Well, I think it's a bit funny to be trying to define nothing. <laughs> Richard Dawkins, I'm sure he didn't say that. That seems ridiculous. The audience reaction confused the normally eloquent professor because he's not used to being the object of laughter. 
What he didn't realize was he was talking to people who were endowed by their creator with the virtue of common sense. This was just another case where the emperor has no clothes. Someone should tell this man who has deceived millions, you're talking foolishness. Is that what you believe? I mean, you can't be nothing. We all have to start from some point. But there has to be something that created everything. You just, just wasn't God. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's just evolution, how things became from one organism into many. But that doesn't solve your dilemma of the initial cause. There has to be an initial cause. If there was a big bang in space that from there issued cats and dogs and horses and cows, the sun, the moon, the stars, the seasons, and all this marvel of creation came from a big explosion, what caused the explosion? And where do the materials come from, from the explosion? And why is there such incredible order from the explosion? Every explosion I've heard of creates chaos, not order. That makes sense? Oh, yeah. This is what you're looking for if you were looking for truth. This is your information that you need to say, Wow, oh, that's logical. How could all this design from the atom to the universe, an incredible order, just happen by accident? Because an atheist actually believes nothing created everything, which is scientifically impossible. And I'm trying to say, Haley, I just want you to think. You're not just a blob of nothing that came from an explosion that created order, which is against nature. That means that you've got purpose and meaning in the universe. So it's not altogether bad news. I just want a relationship with whoever built me. This is too much, too weird that it happened by accident. It didn't happen by accident. I don't feel it.